one. Hi everyone, my name is Bree Rosas. Thank you so much for coming today to my talk about optimizing your blog content. Um, these tips that I'm gonna be giving you today are mostly, not mostly, they're all like non-programming tips. Uh, just tips that everyday users can use on their blogs or their sites as well as, you know, how to optimize the sites for your clients, especially, you know, coming out into this. Let's see here. All right. We have to wait because I guess he has to hit record. I didn't know yet, <laughs> but it's all right. <laughs> all right, awesome, looks like he's ready. Um, just to start over again, my name is Bree Rosas. Um, I am here on behalf of Brandstar, the company that I work for, as a social media specialist. I actually started out with WordPress on the development end, however, I kind of veered over to the marketing end a little bit, um, hence my speech on um, optimizing your blogs and websites. So today we're gonna be setting up, not necessarily setting up, but just looking at tips that we can use while setting up a blog and making sure you keep optimization in mind. All right, and the overall concept um, for this particular talk is gonna be focusing on both the user experience as well as the SEO, the search engine optimization, um, just to kind of keep in mind for the blogger and the user, and just seeing how those tips benefit them both. All right, the first thing that you're gonna be talking about, which I'm sure many of you guys know already, is just monitoring your, your plugins. Honestly, some plugins aren't as necessary as others, as well as you know, just making sure that there's more benefits than you know, issues in the long run, keeping them up to date can be a bit of a toll and it also can slow down your site. And we all know a slow website isn't really conducive with many users these days. So also just keep that in mind whenever you're either updating or getting new plugins, always remember that, keep in mind that you have to think, is it necessary, do you need it, and what features is it really gonna benefit from? All right, and just to kind of have your URLs Google, Google friendly, <laughs> would be a benefit as well for the users and you know, for SEO related issues. Um, for your users, it kind of makes it easier when they're wanting to share your information. I noticed a lot of times with clients that they'll come to me and their website, they'll have everything look good, but on the back end, you know, there'll be redirects like crazy and sometimes they'll have different situations where their URL is like, I don't know, some, like it'll just have random things. It won't have an actual explanation. It won't have any keywords. And at that point, if I'm a user online and I see a friend shares me a link, I'm not gonna click on it because it's gonna look a little suspicious. However, if the keywords are there, you have an idea of what exactly you're getting into, you know, which at the end of the day, you click on there, you have a lower chance of a, you know, a higher bounce rate because you'll get onto the site and you'll already, have an you'll already anticipate, you know what I mean, what exactly you'll be getting into. So that helps. And on an SEO standpoint, it benefits also because you know, the keywords are gonna be in the content, on the page, on the website, as well as in the URL and the, t and, uh, the title, which helps Google kind of cipher through your site and figure out where to rank you overall. Now, reducing post revision. Now, this one's a little tricky because I've actually read online, some people say it really doesn't have that much effect on the speed of your site, um, while others say it does because your database is kind of tracking that and keeping all that information there and it kind of stays dormant. After a while, you don't need a revision from six months ago you know, on your WordPress site if you've changed it so many times throughout the day already. Um, I don't know about you guys, whenever I create a new page, you know, sometimes I'll look and I'll have probably like 10, 15 auto revisions just from little things, and it's like those things take up space. After a while, it's, you know, it's just there. Some people, like I said, say it doesn't make a difference. Meanwhile, others say it does, so, yeah. And um, the image optimization. This one I actually like because for the past few years, the trend of huge images has been like huge images on sites and you know image heavy websites. It's really popular and people are still doing them to this day. However, a lot of people 
they don't take the time out to, you know, optimize the actual image, making sure that your image that you probably need to be just 250 by 250 isn't uploaded on WordPress to be at like 780. It's, you know, it's, it's so much larger and it's taking up so much space on your website site. So take that in consideration, not just with size, but just making sure that you do fill out the information, the, you know, the image alt section, just to make sure that if the image doesn't populate, the users know what should be there. You know, it's kind of just typical, you know, design 101. You just make sure that, you know, you optimize your images to make sure that they upload correctly and that, you know, you don't have to worry about any lags on your site because you don't want to scroll through a single page site and your images are like disappearing or flickering. That's not what you want. Yeah, um, those are the four tips that I felt like were pretty crucial. I have other tips as well, but being that I'm in the lightning round, I didn't want to like extend it and go too long. But if you guys are interested in knowing more, I'll be more than welcome to email you guys some more things, um, the extended version of this slide, as well as the blog post that I've created with this information as well. Um, this particular slide is just talking about the company that I work for, which is Brandstar, which is currently hiring. If any of you are looking for any um, career opportunities within in marketing, the digital realm, or they also do production, so just to kind of put that out there. Um, so, let's see here. Okay, um, so if you guys have any other questions, um, or have any questions, I'll be more than welcome to answer. I'm sorry, what was that? On, um, you can go on brandstar.com, and you would, I think it's join us, I believe, on the left-hand side. Um, but however, depending on the position, if it's in marketing or in the digital department, you can contact me later and I can actually speak to you regarding the positions that we have that aren't yet on the site because we're still, you know, we're growing right now. So there's a lot of things that we haven't updated regarding the career details, things like that. Any other questions? Yeah. Well, usually if you bought the theme and it has an image sliders, most of the time the image slider is um, being generated by a plugin. So, I mean, you can take the actual slider off or just disregard it altogether. Um, it's, I would say when, you're, when you are using it, just make sure that you're taking the time out to use optimized images. Um, because at the end of the day, the slider is going to show the images, but you have to make sure the images are going to actually populate. You know, you don't want the slider to be going and it's blank images. So. Well, it depends on the plugin. Um, most of the plugins, they'll just, it's usually the same thing, honestly. They'll have you upload the images and put it on a slider. Like, you'll create a slider and then you'll upload the images. The images itself will have sections where you would put the name, you know, obviously, um, and the descriptions, and, you know, you'll put those things in there. The image before you actually upload it on the site, you just want to make sure that the naming convention is like proper. You know, if it's going to be a guy with a suit, you want to put a man with a suit. You know, just keep it as simple as possible, um, just to kind of keep it on the same accord moving forward. For Google's purposes, yes, because at that point when they are crawling your site, you know, everything kind of has its purpose and it's named correctly, so it all helps at the end. Your slider isn't working? What, slot, what plugin are you using? It's okay. If you want, you can talk to me after. Like, we can link up and then I can look at, I can look at the plugin that you're using and we can go from there if you want. What's your name? JD. Okay. Awesome. I'll talk to you afterwards and we can do that. Anything else? You get, yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> Correct. Yes, you can set it so that it doesn't automatically put, um, automatically save, and you can, but that's more like on the back end a little bit, but you can still go through it and do that. Okay. And delete them all? That, well, that's awesome. I didn't even know about that. <laughs> what is it called? Database manager? That would be good. I have to look into that one. Mm -hmm. It'll come up, yeah. I wonder if it's. Yeah, go right ahead. What 
I use Smush. I use Smush, but I've, I haven't had a chance to use Ooh yet. Smush is what I've used for the company that I'm with now consistently, but I mean, I definitely look into the other one though. Do you use both? <laughs> Preference? Yeah. Back off. That's actually something I would want to look into now that you've made that point. I haven't dabbled in the other one, but thank you so much. Um, I believe. Ooh? Oh, he said smush and ooh. Ooh? <laughs> like E W E E W W O W W J yeah I haven't used that one but I have heard of it yeah see you guys are teaching me something I like it <laughs> awesome yes she's oh okay um what she said in the front um she said that another image compressor. Um, would be JPEG Mini. So I guess maybe you guys can look into that. And he said smush and ooh, E W W W. Actually, I'm not going to remember that. <laughs> you want to say that? Oh, okay. So, yeah, last year there was a presentation. I can't remember the name, it's probably online in 2015, but um, what he does is he resizes the image first and then he uses JPEG Mini to compress. So I know he shared other tools, but that's mainly what I use because he had this really long blog, blog post and uh, um, that's, that's the main tool I use. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think the next speaker is going, right? All right, no worries. It was nice speaking to you guys. Thank you so much for listening.